renowned physicist, professor, and science nerd. Can I call you that? Sure. Okay. <laughs> Neil Turek is my guest. He directs the world's largest physics institute, theoretical physics institute, and he is the founder of the African Institute for Mathematical Sciences based in Cape Town. Not only that, he collaborates with the likes of Stephen Hawking and others. And back to, you said, uh, one of the first challenges or areas of physics, Big Bang, you're looking at. Yes. What are the other two? Well, the other big challenge is the vacuum energy that we've discovered from observations mm -hmm. that empty space is not empty um, and that it is now 72% of the energy in the universe okay. is, is simply in empty space. But it's not empty. It's not empty. And so where do you start to figure that out? You start by looking, for example, at the Higgs boson. Again. Which is a okay. probe of what's happening at the, in the vacuum. Mm -hmm. But to be honest, I think the main progress is going to come from theory. We, we need new ways of conceptualizing how physics works because our current formulation of physics just gives the wrong answer for the energy in the vacuum. It gives a huge answer, way bigger right. than what we see. And there is a disconnect between us and them, if you will. Yes. Uh, the physicists you work with and the people uh, you spend time with sometimes isolate. Yes. All great scientists, not all, but many, yes. do. Yes, I mean, when you work on a subject as abstruse as this, you need, mm -hmm. you need to separate yourself off and really focus and concentrate. Sure, and your wife says, if you go to that dinner party and start talking about particles and atoms and photons, <laughs> I'm home. Exactly, <laughs> yeah, mm. that's true. So I think there is an unfortunate disconnect because um, physicists do not spend enough time explaining why they are doing what they're doing and how important this might be. And I think society, after all, is supporting their right. work. Uh, we're yes. supported by uh, taxpayers' money. And sure. we, we need to explain what we're doing. And if I get a PET scan or a, a, a medical procedure, I know Absolutely. it's because of physics, and I know somebody put this all together. If I Absolutely. listened to a transistor radio when I was 10. Yes. So the PET scan is an amazing example because mm -hmm. uh, w it works with positrons. Positrons are the antimatter particles of electrons. And they, came at, they were discovered by Paul Dirac, who's a mathematical mm -hmm. physicist, mm -hmm. who simply figured out the equation describing these particles and realized there are two solutions. There's an electron, there's also a positron. And he predicted the existence of a positron, later was discovered, and then uh, used for the PET scan. So um, I, I want to convey the miracle of our capacity to conceptualize the universe within our minds, mm -hmm. make sense of it, logical sense of it, make predictions, and then when those predictions are verified, we've learned how the universe works, and this opens new doors. And so, for example, the, the vacuum energy, you say, what door is this going to open? Right. We don't know, but the fact that space is full of energy potentially means there is a source of sustenance and energy which could help us travel through space. Uh, we've got this whole universe, 14 billion light years across. Mm -hmm. uh, can we explore it? Is that where we're going? Uh, personally, I believe it is. You do? Absolutely. Because I know we discussed over dinner if there's life on Mars. Yes. And that's about as far as we go. Yeah, that's not very far at all. <laughs> no, I there's, know. There's 100 billion galaxies out there each one with a hundred billion stars. Mm -hmm. The universe has this almost infinite potential, um, and uh, it seems clear to me that that's where we are going. And the next big shift, the major shift, will be? Well, I think, uh, so, so I would say there are these three big problems. There's right. the Big Bang, right. the vacuum energy, right. which will control the future of the universe, and then in the middle, on a human scale, by the way, we live between these two extreme scales, mm. uh, and quite precisely. In mathematics, if you multiply two numbers and take the square root, it's called the geometric mean. Our size is the geometric mean of the tiniest scale in physics, called the Planck scale, and the size of the uh, visible universe. So we're in the middle somehow, mm -hmm. and um, we are discovering the quantum nature of matter uh, on everyday scales. So you know right now your laptop and your smartphone uses transistors working on electronics, but those operate on classical principles. They basically operate 
on a principle of individual particles travel, traveling down wires, the particles called electrons. They do, eh? They do. Mm -hmm. What we're now discov discovering is that uh, what we call entanglement. You have many particles which together be behave in an entirely different way than a single particle. Microscopically. Microscopically. Tiny, tiny, tiny. Tiny, tiny. So these particles are, and our understanding, is now opening the way to quantum computers mm. and quantum electronics. So quantum means quantity, obviously, but what, yes. it, what does it mean? Right. The origin was of quantum theory was the discovery that light doesn't come in continuous amounts. It comes in packets of energy called mm. photons. Mm -hmm. But it goes much deeper than that. And I'll try to give you a picture of a quantum. So think about a computer. Mm -hmm. It operates with zeros and ones. If you opened up the computer, looked inside it, all you would find in its memory is a lo very long string of zeros and ones. That's okay? it. Billions of zeros and ones. That's digital information. And that's how classical computers operate. It's very definite. It has infinite memory. I mean, once you've written the zero or a one, that's mm -hmm. it. You can remember it. Right. And so it's very useful. It's not how nature works. Nature works in a quantum way. So take the simplest possible thing in nature, which is the spin of an electron. It's a, it, the electron's like a little ball spinning. Mm -hmm. And if you measure its spin, it's either up or down or on any axis. Superficially, it looks like a bit of information, a zero or one. But actually, if you look closely at that electron, this spin, the information in the spin of the electron is the same as a point on the sky. It's a sphere. Just one spin, electron spin mm -hmm. has within it information corresponding to a whole sphere, a point on a whole sphere. It's an infinite amount of information in the simplest element of nature. So if you take 300 of these electrons, and if we manage to turn them into a quantum computer, which is now looks just around the corner, we will have more information in 300 electrons than there is in, every, in the position of every particle in the whole universe. Incredible. So it's quantum transformation. I know the, we used to talk is, about cellular transformation, but yes. this is quantum. That is what's coming. Mm. We are opening the way to the quantum world. This will change, uh, completely transform our ability to deal with information, to communicate with each other, and the analogy I draw is, you know, we, we are coded for by our genes, which are digital, uh, but we're analog beings. We, we like uh, continuous mm -hmm. things, music and art mm -hmm. and so on. Mm -hmm. So we operate at a higher level than our genes. Our genes is not, right. uh, not really living. The genes is just a code for a living creature. Thing. But we are, now, we are now in the process of creating quantum computers which operate at a higher level of reality than we do. And do you think I'll still be alive? Watch yeah. your answer. <laughs> I, I, I really believe so. Okay, how, how incredible. Yeah. Really, and to think your mother doesn't understand how electricity works. That's true. Really, <laughs> neither do I. That's true. But I know, I'll study up. Good. <laughs> how nice to meet you. Lovely to meet you. Uh, Massey lectures across this country. What Thank an you. honor to have you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Neil Turok, The Universe Within, From Quantum to Cosmos. And remember, you can join me on Twitter at Fanny Kiefer or catch our conversations on YouTube. There will be many more cosmic guests to come. <laughs> Till then, thanks for watching Shaw TV and being with me today.